Good evening and welcome to an end of the year compilation featuring highlights of this year's series and such has been the quality of the shows that the programme has been specially reduced. Boris Yeltsin shows his usual tact and diplomacy at the unveiling of Yitzhak Rabin's memorial statue. <laughs> In Kettering, residents near a newly opened magnet factory are advised not to wear steel toe caps. And in Geneva, there's a daring escape from a local vivisection clinic. <laughs> Ian and Paul, explain this away. Get your eyes off my thighs. You want to have a go at this? Um, yeah, I think <laughs> might be one I could get right. Yeah. Oh. Princess Di, she's got... Um... <laughs> She's got uh, no, she's got nothing changes. She's got uh, spudgy lines no, in the back do of her it. legs. No, you do. She's got spudgy lines. No, not across the gags, please. No. She's got spudgy lines. Are you still here? She's got spudgy lines. <laughs> I'll the back like of you her next week, thank God. <laughs> she's got cheeves and onion, chives and onion on the cheeves. What a cheese! What are you talking about? <laughs> what a cheese! You're a bloody maniac. She's got chives and onion on one leg, and she's got a uh, mixed salad on the other. And people are saying, you know, you've got salad on the back of your thighs. You said, no, I've just sat on a stool. <laughs> Give them the points. Uh, <laughs> you, answer the, you answer the question. The son said you've got a great lump on your thighs, and she said that's no way to talk about Will Carling. <laughs> Everyone a winner. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Could have uh, fooled me. What does that is... mean? That... Nothing. You just said something on the top of your head, it's meaningless. Yeah. Did you pass the water? <laughs> it's all tiny, meaningless, and you pass the water, got a laugh. Just tiny. It's tiny. <laughs> Uh, in the days before the crucial debate, John Major was uh, clearly concerned by the serious implications of the report. Have you read the Scott report yet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you read it then? Have you got a copy? Uh, I've, I've read a precy. No, he hasn't read it. <laughs> uh, Paul and Ken. <laughs> The Supreme Being. Uh, this is Madame to Swords. They've announced they've done. They've finished the new cabinet. They've got it ready before the election. I'm afraid you won't get anything out of a Labour MP this close to the election. It's going to be seven months of complete bullshit. Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> J coming in for the Richard and Judy trial. Was that you at the airport, man? Yes, yes. Yeah, you take your research serious, I don't do. you? I do, very thorough. <laughs> I just read the papers. <laughs> um, so what made you choose... Uh, did you choose Richard and Judy for him, or was he a big fan no, of No, no, Granada Television. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Granada Television approached him. Right. And is it true, then, that you got one pound for appearing on Richard and Plus £150,000 expenses, yes. <laughs> <laughs> 150 grand, that's quite good, really, isn't it? Yeah, it would be if it was true, but of course it isn't. Oh, isn't it? No, I just made it up. <laughs> oh, I see. But <laughs> well, that's what you expect of me, isn't it? Yeah. yeah well, I believe everything you say, usually, I'm Max. Glad to hear it. <laughs> David Mallow has a Chelsea strip in bed. Yeah, of course he does. Hmm. <laughs> um. <laughs> So is it true that he's moving to the, to the UK or was looking for no, houses? No, no, it's oh, another right. one of my stories. Right. It's no, no truth. Was but it actually OJ or...? <laughs> Interestingly, OJ has spoken at the Oxford Union, as has uh, Ian Hislop. He's appeared on Richard and Judy's show, as has Ian Hislop, and he's been successful in a court of law. <laughs> Cloud control, hootsies or tootsies? A list of the supply of arms to either the hootsies or the tootsies. I think they're the, the, hootsies the and tootsies, but then, I don't know, you're the MP. Whichever one was responsible, <laughs> whichever one was responsible for, for the, the genocide no, last year um, was armed by mm -hmm. a British arms firm, it is alleged. If Ferrybridge is in the Isle of Man, and Miltek is based in the Isle of Man, mm. but its, uh, its company's secretary, for some reason, lives on the island of Sark, so it must have been somewhat inconvenient <laughs> doing the accounts. What's it like to have a real comedian on the show? <laughs>
It's, uh, it's easy. Would, would, would you like someone to sit with you? <laughs> uh, James Goldsmith. James. One. Oh, yes, but this that's is... That's the, the advertisement, the referendum for party put in, and that's Alan Waters, who I've met before. <laughs> um, right? Big buddy? The... What, the connection? The connection is uh, <laughs> that they're... Uh, <laughs> They're all part of the Barmy Army who call themselves the Referendum Party. And when is the uh, party conference occurring? Saturday. In Brighton. In Brighton, that's where you live, Mark. It is, I'll be there. Will you? No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Nigel, Sir Alan Walters. Um, <laughs> I remember at the time it was either you or him, and then it was both of you who got out. It was a bit more... <laughs> The first part is not quite true, but the second part is totally true. Right. <laughs> uh, Sir Alan Walters is uh, best remembered uh, as Margaret Thatcher's economic advisor, who clashed with Nigel Lawson. Uh, apparently, they couldn't agree on the best way to ruin the economy. <laughs> so, sorry, um, run the economy. That's all I'm saying. I thought you were going to throw it over me for a moment. <laughs> well, that, that's the lorry rotisserie on the... Uh, it's kind of like a toast, like a toast rack. They put the lorry... Well, this in. is the madness of having lorries delivering fire to the continent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that, that's, a, that's a Kent tragedy. Just because there's people in Calais who've had the electricity cut off and they're delivering fire and they hand it out... I mean, it's, anyone could see that happening. Why in this country are we still delivering fire to the continent? <laughs> Um, it's sheer madness. <laughs> it is. Um, well, your answer is sheer madness because it was, in fact, poly polystyrene that was on fire, not, not fire, obviously. Um, <laughs> uh, one lorry driver, John Edwards, said, I shut myself in the toilet and held paper napkins to my face to block out the fumes. Uh, a wise precaution in any train toilet. <laughs> As soon as the fire was reported, the usual emergency procedures kicked in with hordes of graphic artists rushing to the scene. Uh, the Times diagram explained to its readers how the intricate series of uh, tunnels interlinked, whilst the Sun's diagram explained to its readers which two countries the Anglo-French... <laughs> That was a sample of Margaret Thatcher. Well spotted. Yes. And the band was... Blur. <laughs> a big fan of Blur, are you? Yeah. But was it a hit or a it miss? It was a hit. A hit for who? Uh, blur. blur. <laughs> I'm not mm. quite sure of the rules of this game. No. <laughs> I think... Is that, was I, why is no one else talking? <laughs> well, you simply jumped in before anyone else. Before well, we you looked at me. You. Yeah, well, yes, that, that's, is it my question? I'm allowed to look at you. Is it Richard? my question? I'm the host of the show. Um, it is. Uh, what do you do, sorry? Virtually. <laughs> <laughs> Are we saying that wasn't blur? Uh, I might be saying that it Wait, wasn't, wasn't blur. Wait, if it wasn't blur, it was Oasis. <laughs> You, you Thank really goodness got... I've got a young person <laughs> yeah. on my side. <laughs> you got that, your finger on the pulse. That's of off the latest. Uh, what's the story, Morning Glory? Is it? Don't yeah. think you'll impress yeah. anyone by knowing that. <laughs> <laughs> no, <don't... laughs> was it um, the Sex Pistols? It was an acid, an acid band, band, wasn't it? <laughs> Called. Oh, give me a clue for Christ's sake! Sitting you've got, there, you've got... so pompous. <laughs> 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 It's a good C of E story about a vicar trying to introduce a new hymn and the choir not wanting to sing it on the grounds that the hymn's called Autumn Days and it's one of those modern C of E hymns and the first verse celebrates jet engines refuelling overhead. <laughs> <laughs> you can't give them full points for that and missed out the major point. Which is? What, the Which vicar comes down your club? Oh, they <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Which is that, in actual fact, they're changing the lyrics to attract children. Have you got a girlfriend at the moment? Yes, I have a girlfriend at the moment. How old is she? <laughs> <laughs> Mind your own bloody business. <laughs> I heard she was 16. 
<laughs> that's an out. That was ter that was last week. Oh. You're seventeen now. Seven, seventeen. Yeah. Your haircut's older than that. <laughs> <laughs> When, I was, when I was 17, I couldn't get a 17-year-old girl for love or money. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I think it's the latter of the two options you mentioned. <laughs> the choir of St Mary's in Roxham wanted to go back to good old-fashioned hymns with words that make sense to children, such as, do but themselves confound his strength the more is. <laughs> Just because you can't understand it, Angus. <laughs> Would you like to explain? Yeah. Read it out again from the autocue. Do but themselves <laughs> confound his strength the more is. People who protest right. do only confound themselves, i.e. make it more difficult for themselves, and therefore make God's strengths the stronger. You should have a point for that, really, yeah. shouldn't And when I was this a hit record? <laughs> Uh, apparently the choir felt uh, uncomfortable <laughs> singing songs with lyrics like Autumn days when the grass is jewel led Jet planes meeting in the air to be refuel led <laughs> In the summer when the grass is aglow yeah. Here comes a plane landing at Heath Row <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just I hope get a point for that one Yes, yeah. that yeah, that's, that's a lovely thought, thank you um, which, Here uh, comes a man, he's got a suit on Here comes a plane, it's landing at Luton <laughs> Stansfield. <laughs> I've never heard of it. Stansted, I know. Yes. <laughs> he had this bouffant hairstyle and it was getting a bit wild. There were a few sort of windy shots of it. <laughs> yeah. So you had to do that with doesn't mine. like the only way you could do that, wasn't it? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous to think that women are just going to vote simply because of the way somebody's hair is, though. Isn't that a bit ridiculous? Um, I mean, yeah. there were people saying in Nazi Germany, I love what he does with his hair. <laughs> <laughs> and that moustache, honestly. <laughs> a lot of people wouldn't get away with it, but you. <laughs> um, I think this is Fergie, who blamed that she got into jungle music uh, and blamed those rock and roll rhythms. Um, for running up a three million overdraft and shagging everyone in sight. <laughs> she, she, she did have a jab in the jungle. W one of the most unpleasant places to have a jab. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, she, I was gonna say, she says this um, is responsible for all her subsequent behaviour. Um, yeah. She said this on the Ruby Wax show. Yeah. Another good PR move by the Duchess. <laughs> I won't look an idiot, will I? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember uh, any aspects of the interior of her home, such as her bedroom, for example? Lots of okay. pictures of the Queen. Yes, one picture of the Queen, certainly. Yeah, Post-its on the drawers of the thing. Oh, yes, know. that's right. So white mm. T-shirts, blue T-shirts, mm. green T-shirts, red T-shirts. This is the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you live here. <laughs> Sleep in big comfy thing. <laughs> uh, Fergie believes that uh, after the injection, chemical toxins went straight to her brain and stayed there. Uh, the medical reason being that nature abhors a vacuum. <laughs> in the uh, autobiography she was plugging on the show, Fergie used a variety of nursery rhyme images and compared herself to a Humpty Dumpty figure. I had to put myself back together when all the king's horses and all the king's men had already written the job off. <laughs> the only difference being, of course, that Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, not a Texan. Uh, Claire Short, Tony Blair, Julius Caesar, and a carpet mite. <laughs> invaded Britain, um, carpet mites invaded Britain, and... Um, <laughs> oh, I know. Didn't they all join in in national constipation? <laughs> <with you? laughs> or something else, or they're all like helicopters, or one of them <laughs> eats spinach, but the other three don't, and... <laughs> It's going to be something obscure and stupid like that. <laughs> One of them is made out of jam. 
like to nominate one to be made out of jam? Yes. Uh, oh, I don't know. The carpet mite's made out of jam. Um, well, I'm going to... Don't you know uh, anything? Uh, the carpet mite, Tony Blair mite, Clear Short mite, and oh. Caesar did. <laughs> Caesar. I am going to. I'm going to have to actually give one to. They Eddie. all conquered Britain, apart from the carpet mite. It's nowhere near, Ian. It's a pathetic <laughs> guess. Even further away than the, uh, the the one that you. <laughs> Sorry, I've been recruited by National Nose Blowing. <laughs> They wanted someone to blow their nose on television to prove that, you know, it's not embarrassing, it's not sad, <laughs> and, um... And it's not pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the answer? Uh, I'm going to tell you. Uh, I'm going to have to actually give you uh, one point, uh, because you got the right odd one out, which is the carpet mite, even though you did say it was because it was made of jam. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it all press complaints yeah, against peers? It is, um, I was hoping you wouldn't... Because, you should, <laughs> because didn't you send you your... You should know all about complaints here. <laughs> but you? didn't you send photographers in to sneak up on this chap's wife um, mm. while she was in a hospital or something caring like that? Yeah. Um, and you got ticked off for that? Yeah. You sort of got rather bollocked by Murdoch, didn't you? <laughs> rather. <laughs> I got severely bollocked, yeah. yeah. Did you? Were you sacked? Sacked, sacked. You're now... <laughs> sacked did you say? Were you sacked? That's a very serious thing to say on television. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get sacked? I didn't get sacked. Yeah, I'm glad you said it, because that's going to help pay for the holiday, thanks. <laughs> I can just imagine a jury <laughs> finding for the editor of the News of the World. It's almost like finding for the editor of Private Eye, isn't it? Mm. By the way, Ian, you know where you live? Yeah. You're about to get a new neighbour. You? Happy New Year. <laughs> What, well, actually, next-door neighbours are you going to be? He'll be within long lens, I can assure you. Yeah. <laughs> is that a photographer? He's a charmer, or... isn't he? <laughs> Do you two want to go and have a fight? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, the PCC castigated the day mirror in March for giving away the whereabouts of Robbie Coltrane's house, uh, saying in some cases the publication of an individual's address might create a potential risk to that person. Uh, the mirror apologised for any stress caused in a press statement issued by their editor, Piers Morgan. Uh, of 13 Woodcut Drive, Chigwell. <laughs> actually, can I just say that they actually, um, they rejected that complaint. Did they? By Robert Coltrane, so you're entirely wrong to use that against me. Oh, yeah, yeah, but they did, they did say that... I just uh, thought I'd were, say that, in case they were the, the viewers got the wrong idea by this vindictive attack on me, personally. Oh, dear. That's, carry you're, on. You're feeling a bit vulnerable. <laughs> you're invading my privacy, and I'd rather you left me alone. <laughs> You no, tried you that stepped into the before. public eye now, Piers. <laughs> you were elected to come on this programme, you've mm. got to take it. I trade, demand my privacy. OK, mm. we won't talk to you again, then. <laughs> <laughs> Never a man of my word. Uh, Piers, your four um, co unlikely companions are Rupert Allison, oh. <laughs> Sting, a koala bear, and Geoffrey Clements, leader of the Natural Law Party. Is the answer jam? Not in Only so many because, words. Because no. last week Eddie Izzard said so everybody roared words. with laughter. It was hilarious. I just thought I'd say. But people like him. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Mm. Very good. <laughs> This is a Hull question because you somehow knew that I came from Hull and I think uh, Prescott is our MP and Rod Hull, an emu. Desmond Chichu. It did Tutu train in Hull. I think he Tutu went... Tutu train? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Tutu train? Coming on over the Hull. <laughs> oh. Mr. Blobby, Zeus, Stonehenge, and Dolly Pardon. Dolly Pardon? Dolly Pardon! <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. Now, would you like to see it again? Uh, yes. That What's she done? Dolly Pardon. Dolly... How, how are you spelling pardon? <laughs> P-A-R-T-O-N. And it's pronounced... Pardon. <laughs> it's pronounced... <laughs> <laughs> In America, it is pronounced pardon. <laughs> Obviously. Or like Bill Clinton. 
Back me up on this, Elvis. Like it's pronounced pardon. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> now, Zeus or Zeus. <laughs> Um, he's the only one who's managed to train two pigeons to get him home at night. <laughs> <laughs> it's theme it's parks, one, isn't it? It's theme parks. So there was just a blobby theme park, and there's a Dolly a Pardon <laughs> uh, theme park called um, Dolly Dollywood. Mm -hmm. um, and there's one I think opening up in Greece based um, uh, Myth Mythworld, which is like <laughs> no, it's not Chris Eubank saying Miss World. That's <laughs> Myth. <laughs> What is Dollywood? Have you been there? No. Oh. Didn't you go there when you were recording in Nashville? No. Wasn't it open in those days? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> is that why? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing your songs are a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver's army is here to stay. <laughs> Angus, 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 give him the glasses, go. Oh, right. <laughs> 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 All of the time you <laughs> so You were described recently in the Times as a, a grand mère terrible. Oh, now, what's this mean? <laughs> Terrible grandmother. Terrible no, grandmother. I'm a grandmother, but I'm, I'm, I'm a spinster of the parish of Westminster. I'm not a grandmother. Exactly. No, so they got it wrong. Um, I'm going to actually... Claire was a grandmother, and yes. she didn't know it. Right. Um, Jocasta. Jocasta was a grandmother and yes. didn't know it. Didn't know it. Linford Christie isn't a grandmother. Uh, nor am I. Oh, he's a grandfather and he didn't know it. Um, <laughs> and Jennifer, you've got a secret child who's I here hope... tonight. <laughs> Mother! I do. Mother! <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Hey, How are you been keeping? Do you see much of Dad these days? <laughs> he went. Did he? He yeah. went. Yes. Did he? Uh, sad business. Was. <laughs> um, yes, I business. Yes, I never having... trust a Coleman. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Empty their sacks and off they go. <laughs> The Golden what? The story of a quilt? <laughs> golden Retriever turned into a quilt. Yeah. No. Golden Eye. New Bond film about a quilt. <laughs> Wants to take over the world. Starring. So, Mr Bond. <laughs> that's the quilt. Yeah. He's doing impressions of quilts now. <laughs> so, Mr Bond. Yes. So, Mr Bond, we meet at last. <laughs> I suppose you're wondering what my tog rating is. <laughs> I am warm in the winter, but cool in the summer. <laughs> Let's see how you like that. Uh, the answer is Golden Moments. Uh, the story of a quilt, Golden Moments being oh, the name of a quilt. Oh, I see. Designed <laughs> by June Barnes. Next, frog hunters told to what? Piss off. <laughs> By frogs. Uh, hop off. Told to grow up. Is it a tabloid? Hop off. That sounds like another Bond spy. <laughs> <laughs> he throws frogs at people. Yeah. <laughs> Let us see what you are like <laughs> with the toes. <laughs> uh, I have a tadpole in my pocket. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hang up. It's very modest of you. Yeah. <laughs> Three months time, it'll leap over a wall though. <laughs> Hang up their jam jars was, uh, <laughs> And next, police grab what at Palace? Well, how are we Intruder. Um, no. no. All right, nothing to be so unpleasant It was it. something. <laughs> I just said intruder, it could have happened. Yes, but it didn't. Um, police grab air pistol, in mm. fact, at Palace. Uh, Whose was it? An intruder's. <laughs> <laughs> next, what kills Hippo? David Attenborough. Ladybird. <laughs> it's caterpillar. <laughs> it's jam. <laughs> you see, Piers? <laughs> so that's comedy. Yeah. Uh, oh, the answer is tennis ball. Uh, the tragic tale of a two ton hippo who swallowed a tennis ball in Germany. Surely you must have covered that in the Daily Mirror. Yes, I know. Doing that's very well. Page days, five stories. 
What do you know about newspaper editing, Clark? <laughs> about as much as you do. <laughs> dear, oh dear, Clark. So you no, plunge merrily no, deeper. I know it's not fair, because no. the mirror now is almost as good as the sun. <laughs> Well, just now I was rude to you, sent photographers around to my doorstep the next day, so I'm not doing that again. No. You uh, won't see them this time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he is charming, isn't he? <laughs> so don't try the popularity line with me, Hislop. Why? Does anybody here like it? Do, do you like him? Anybody actually like him? <laughs> I may not know much about editing newspapers, uh, Piers, but Ian is a regular on this show. You <laughs> have come to see Ian. <laughs> We're strangers, they don't like us, they've never heard of us. <laughs> Although, I wasn't cheering then, I must say. Yeah. <laughs> In his McTaggart lecture this year, John Burt praised this programme. Uh, Have I Got News For You has carried forward an ancient national tradition of puncturing the powerful and pompous, said the puffed-up little twat. <laughs> Half stereos nicked from faces of five men. <laughs> New teachers arrive at the riding school. <laughs> I said I'd be wearing this. <laughs> uh, when you said you were going to enter a horse at the Grand National... <laughs> Take a photo of me now. I'm fing a horse. Uh, thank you. And I leave you with news that in Kabul there's evidence of another arms deal scandal as weapons arrive without the proper instructions. <laughs> in London, John Major G's himself up before a big speech on drug abuse. And at last, there's conclusive proof that misshapen vegetables simply aren't funny. <laughs> Merry Christmas. More comedy later tonight on BBC Two with the A-Force at 11.25 and you're invited. There's more from the team in this 1997 BBC book, which is available now. Holy underwear! Mel Brooks, Neil Simon, Woody Allen, some of America's funniest writers were inspired... ...by one man. I belong to Sid. Love it. Sid was the flame. Every writer was a moth. Arena reunites the king of comedy with his team. You guys did, really did define sketch comedy in the 50s. What do you guys think of what came afterwards? The 60s. <laughs> Arena and three films from Caesar's writers starting at 9 Christmas Eve on BBC Two. I love you! <laughs>